you're watching the free version of Silhouette Essentials. For projects and footage, head to BorisFX.com for the premium download. Next up is to talk about motion blur and the roto overlay tool. There could be a whole class devoted to motion blur methodology, but I'll just do a quick demo in this class. So basically when you start a shot and there's motion blur, you want to make sure that you know where to put the line. There's a lot of different ways to approach it. Some people roto the motion blur all the way out to the edge. Some people roto the core, some people roto in between. And it really just depends on what the final output's going to be. So in this case, I typically roto in between the solid edge and the motion blur if there is motion blur. If there's no motion blur, I'm on the last solid pixel. So let's just take a shape, for example, and we'll look at this shape right here. So if I go into the roto overlay, I'm in the output view already, and I click A. And first I want to turn on motion blur for this shape. We'll turn it on here and we'll go down to the node and we'll enable motion blur. So now you can see here that you can see some motion blur here and we'll up the samples as well to give us a better look. 32. Okay, it's a little smoother. So the motion blur is extending out into the plate maybe a little bit too much, but it really just depends on what you're going to be doing with the roto in the end. So a way to sort of visualize what you can see is that you can use the Roto Overlay tool. And so you can do that by clicking this button here on the Roto toolbar on the left or the hotkey shortcut, which is Shift O. This tool provides three options to visualize a selected shapes animation and motion blur, which are the motion path, motion blur, and onion skin. And here, this window here lets you select or deselect the various options. So the motion path here displays the shape motion path, and that is the green line with the markers that you see here. The green markers are visual indicators for frames and keyframes. And if I hold Alt over a motion path marker, you can see information about the frame down in the lower left status bar, and it will jump to that shape's frame. For the motion blur, it displays a dashed line to show the width of the motion blur. And so that is the dashed line here that you see. So you can see how far out is extending depending on where I placed my shape. And so this is a great tool for when the viewer is set to foreground and the option lets you visualize the motion blur without rendering it in the view. So if I set this to foreground, there's less processing. I'm actually gonna turn off the onion skin right now and the motion path. So now I'm just focused on the motion blur. So I feel like, well, I really don't want my motion blur out this high on top of the shape. And so this means I need to move my shape or move my points lower. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys to be more precise. So that's sort of getting me in the ballpark of where I want my motion blur. And then I have to click on this shape too. And to see the motion blur, I have to enable it. So I can see it, but like I said, I'm not rendering it in the view because I'm in the foreground, but I can see the width of the motion blur right here. So that's a good tool to just get in the ballpark for the motion blur. And then if I turn on the onion skin, this is just where the path of the shape is. You can see it on the previous and next frames, but I find it a little bit distracting. So I just sort of turn that off, but you can leave it on. And you can also just use the shape color if you want. So that now we're using blue, because that is the color of the shape. But I'm just going to disable that and the onion skin and the motion path. And this is what I'm typically focused on. So if we just Click this pinky here, and we enable motion blur. And now you can see down here, well, maybe my shape is too big. I want to pull in this line so that my motion blur is not extending too far out. So it just depends on 
the preference for your team. So there's another aspect of motion blur I should talk about as well. So if we go to this shape here, and I'm going to go to the node, and that is the shutter angle and the shutter phase. So if you're not getting the result you want with these values here, you can always change it. But it's one of those things where I'm hesitant to change something that I don't really edit all the time. And that would be something very specific to your own project here. If you're handing off Roto that's been edited with a shutter angle and the shutter phase, that's something you should let your comper know. And you just have to be careful because you might need to keyframe that and it could get a little bit more complicated. So if I edit this value here, the shutter angle, if I just make that 200, you're going to see that the value or the, the line where the motion blur, it changes. And that means that I also have to edit this. It can't be negative 90. It has to be half. So it's negative 100. So you have to change both values. And so that gets a little bit cumbersome. I'm just going to put it back to the default. And then you can also do one other thing, and that is use expressions. So if you do find you need to edit this, you can just drag the shutter angle onto the shutter face. And now you see you have a little box here where you can add in a little bit of coding. So I'm just going to do this really quick. It's not really coding. It's just putting in um, an operation. So times negative 0 0.5. And that way, every time I change this, if I change this to 240, then that's going to be automatically half. Okay, so I'm going to just reset that. I'm just going to click that and now back to the defaults and make sure that it truly is back to the default. Okay. We're good. So another thing that you can also do to help you with your motion blur is to use the new motion blur controller. So for example, if you have multiple roto nodes in your project, let me just pull this out here. We can get a bigger view of the trees window. And for example, if I have this roto node here, I'm just going to enable that, clicking the D, and I'm going to disable this one. I'll go back to this one and we'll just turn off the motion blur. And I'm going to go to this roto node here and turn off the motion blur. So now I have um, a couple of roto nodes here and if I want to just turn the motion blur on and off easily, but I don't want to have to go into each node like I just did, you can go to the actions menu and new actions and create motion blur controller. And then you're going to end up with this node here and the dotted lines are connected to all the roto nodes that it now controls. You can turn off the dotted lines by clicking that little icon up here in the trees window and I can click that again. So here in the motion blur controller, I can say it's always enabled or if I don't want it enabled, I can just click that box like that. And you can also put in your expression here, shutter angle to shutter phase and do the operation like I did before. So this new motion blur controller node will override any motion blur settings in any of the other existing roto nodes. Okay, so we're at the end and now we can do our final output. I've done a slap comp here. So if I click on the slap comp, I can render it, but you can see I have no motion blur because I turned it off in this roto node here. However, I can just enable it in my motion blur controller node here. Click on the edit settings here and click enable. And we can even do some more samples, 32. And we're ready to go. So I've just output into a JPEG test sequence, which I've already rendered. And this is the output right here. So I'm going to just zoom out. So it's kind of a slap comp against a darker gray background. We can see our roto. And you can also see the proper motion blur.
and all of the open shapes and closed shapes. I hope you enjoyed this class and I'll see you in the next one.